I downloaded all of Ben Marriott's project files and here are 10 things we can learn. But this is a warning for the faint of heart. The first thing I learned was so shocking, your whole world might just crumble. Okay, so this is Ben Marriott's Gumroad and he has 54 products on here. So we're gonna download all of them. And I'm just realizing that this is gonna take a really long time. Starting timer, name a fair price. Nothing, Ben. And now I feel a bit bad about paying him nothing. So let's pay him something this time. $5, fair price. Oh, come now. What, because I've been downloading so many, you think I'm a fucking robot? Are those stairs? Maybe I am a robot. Can't be stairs. Ah, guess I'm not a fucking robot. These verifications were really annoying. You can even see in the time lapse just how many of these I was hit with. It was over and over and over. But I pushed through because the goal was worth it. So there we have it. The last project file. Ten dollars. There you go, Ben. Here is. Oh, they stay. I'm paying. I'm paying money, and they still want me to verify. We're on 31 minutes. Plus minus 30 minutes and $15 spent. I call that a deal. So the only thing left to do at this point is to dive into the project files and see what they have to offer. I had no idea how big a task it was going to be. After just a couple of hours of this, I was starting to fade fast. So in desperate need of a performance enhancer, I grabbed a coffee so I could keep my eyes on the prize. Ah, yes, the engraving effect. Well, we fuck around with some things here. Boom. <laughs> XP money, let's go. Oh shit, that's stupid. Okay, what else can we put in here? I think we gotta put in the man himself. Also got another little idea here. Boom, there we have it. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> cool, well, that was fun. Totally worth the $10 that we spent on this. So now that I've downloaded all of the files and looked through each one thoroughly and carefully, it's time to get into what I found. Starting with number one. We've all heard Ben's gospel. Right? We always label our layers. We always label So what's this, Ben? And this, shape layer one, layer four, shape layer two, isolation mode four. What does the word always mean to you? We believed in you, Ben. You were our Messiah, but you let us down. And now it's time for a new Messiah. Who, and I'll be honest about this, labels his layers 60% of the time, every time. It's called Sex Panther. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. And now that we've all had our worlds rock to the core, it's time for number two, experiment with mixed media. Ben creates some really interesting work by combining different types of media with After Effects. In this project, for example, he made a looping eye animation in After Effects, printed out each frame, and then traced each frame by hand in pencil and imported those back into After Effects. Then he just messed around with duplicating and offsetting the eyes in a bunch of different ways to get different results. And I would say there is a big payoff for the effort he put into combining hand-drawn and After Effects animation. Another example is this melon, where he created this rotating melon using a stop motion technique and then added the walking legs and background in After Effects. The learning here is to mess around with other types of artistic media and combine them with techniques and visuals in After Effects. Number three, use texture. Here are some examples where Ben uses animated texture layers, and in each one, the texture overlays add more visual interest and break the clean flat vectors, which can sometimes feel a bit sterile, and a bit of texture just livens them up. He often uses the same texture for his projects, which you can download for free with this light texture video, as well as a high quality scan of the texture used to create this video. Number four, put eyes on objects. Ben puts eyes on everything he can think of. A pencil, a mushroom, a gradient circle, an avocado, a waffle, a watermelon, even eyes on eyes. And the result of this obsession is really charming and playful. It turns something ordinary into a character, and that's good because as humans, we connect with characters. And so the animations become more relatable. I wonder what else he could put eyes on. You tell me. Number five, put stars on everything. So going through all these projects, I've discovered Ben's two obsessions, putting eyes on objects and stars. Here are some stars, some more stars, even more stars, and you may have noticed the holy grail, eyes on object and stars. And I must say, I'm getting thirsty vibes from this avocado, especially with that tongue out, which I'm sure was intentional. So let's just enhance that a little bit. Do a bit of this, do a bit of that. 
There we go. I'm pretty sure this is closer to what Ben was going for. Number six, add frame by frame elements. The highlights on this melting text are a good example. The splashes in this coffee animation are a good example as well. And the eyes on this Halloween project. Then in the melon example, to get the run cycle, he created a rough frame by frame animation first and used that as a reference in After Effects to get a better result. And I saw this a couple times. These frame by frame additions elevate the quality of the work and the fact of the matter is that some things make more sense to do frame by frame and combining hand drawn animation in After Effects creates some more dynamic results. Number seven, preserve underlying transparency. This is a technique I only learned recently from the man himself, so let me just show you how it works. So with two objects in a scene, if we click this T button for the top object, it only shows up on the object or objects below. And you can actually keep stacking layers with this button checked, so this can be a great replacement for mats when adding textures or shadows, for example. And I thought this technique was used in a clever way in Ben's Shape Morph tutorial, where we have the two base shapes that are separate layers, and then the Preserve Underlying Transparency button has been used on the two layers above so that they apply across the animation and you didn't have to create two separate mat and texture layers for each shape. Give this video a like if you've never seen this technique before and if you have seen it before, give this video a like and share it with your Ben Marriott fans. Number eight, good illustration trumps complicated animation. You might have heard this before from professional motion designers, but very often you can get away with very simple animation if your illustration is very good. And this is a good example of that. So the actual animation is very simple. The eyes are just scaling up, the stars are twinkling, and for the head, there are just a bunch of layers with wave warp applied to them. But the quality of the illustration, including color and style, are the hero. This project is another good example. Each scene looks awesome as an illustration, so the subtle animation just brings it all to life. Again, look how basic the animation is for the psychedelic mushroom, but the result is great. And of course, our thirsty avocado is another great example. So if you didn't have a reason to practice illustration before, this should be it. Number nine, start in grayscale and color after. A great way to illustrate and animate is to start with grayscale so that you are focusing on the values and contrast instead of going straight into color which can add an unnecessary layer of complexity and slow down the process. In Ben's coffee project we can see he animated the whole project in grayscale and then used an adjustment layer with a CC toner effect to color it. He did something similar with the tint effect in this project and once again he used a CC toner effect in the Loki title project. Many professionals use this workflow and I would highly recommend giving it a go. Number 10, the hand of the artist. The hand of the artist is a term used in the art world and here is a definition. The hand of the artist refers to the evidence of authorship in a work of art identified by any evidence of the artist's mark in the piece. For example, the brush strokes left in paint, the delicate modeling of a sculpture, and even the general emotive qualities of a piece can all be described as the artist hand. This is the proof left behind that reveals or provides insight into the artist's role in creating the art. This is something that Ben reminds us that in the world of motion design with all the slick vectors and digital production, we can still remind the viewer that an artist created this and leave behind evidence of this fact. We've seen examples of this in the melon and the pencil eyes, but I would also like to point out that the texture Ben uses is a texture he created himself on paper and then scanned in to use in After Effects. And he uses this texture all the time. It's his artistic mark. As motion designers, we should think about our own mark and how we can bring back the hand of the artist into our own work. Now, as a bonus, I just want to point out a couple things in some projects that I thought were very clever and interesting. So in this project, I just want to focus on two of the backgrounds. So look at this one. Looks pretty awesome and satisfying, right? But look at how it was created. So this is what we have in the child comp, a simple position animation. Then that comp was duplicated, masked a bunch of times and animated to the left. Then a mirror effect was used to finish it off. And that's it. This is a deceptively simple solution. Very nice. Then this background. Look at the child comp. This dude is just stacking and animating a bunch of color palettes. And then he uses a polar coordinates effect on a bunch of duplicates to create what looks like a tear in the space time continuum. Very dope. Then there's this chrome text. And why you would ever want to create chrome anything is beyond me. But the way Ben created these shines is interesting to me and it's a solution I never would have thought of. 
So on a duplicate of the text comp, he added a 45 degree directional blur and then used a curves effect like a fucking magician to get this. And the second duplicate is the same, but with a negative 45 degree directional blur. And I think this is clever because it's all driven by the content of the same composition. So even if you change the font, it still works. Then with the Loki title animation, I found it really interesting how he created the text randomization using time displacement. So if we hide the effects, there is just a bunch of Loki text cycling through different fonts. Then the displacement map adds a wiggle to each character and the time displacement effect randomizes the text. And both of these effects are being driven by these noise layers. It's a very clever solution and it's definitely worth watching his tutorial and adding these techniques to your motion toolkit. If you enjoyed this deep dive into how a professional motion designer gets things done, you'll enjoy this playlist where I reverse engineer some pro animations. Take it easy ease and subscribe for more motion XP.